All right, I think we're ready. So the first thing we're going to do is actually we're going to use the import and export wizard. And uh, there's a file in Canvas, so I need to go into Canvas too. Um, it's similar to what we'll do with the uh, tools, except that it's a little bit simpler. And the, the wizard works really well if your imports and exports are fairly simple. And it also works really well if it's a one-time deal. The, when you we get into the other thing, you'll see that you wouldn't want to do it if it was a one-time deal because it's way too much work. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to go to uh, Canvas. So what have I got down here? It's interesting that it only kind of knows what I do. This part doesn't need the uh, the Visual Studio stuff that we downloaded. It's built into the uh, the here in a second. So under files in Canvas, there's several files we're going to be using. Um, the one I'm going to do services text. Uh, the new employees will be for the SSIS. The writer's text is the one you'll use for your assignment. Download them. I'll show you. This is weird, and maybe somebody knows why. So I'm going to do new services text. Canvas, for some reason, has horrible problems with text files. Ah, that did work okay. I was getting pound signs between everything. This is uh, what we're going to be importing. It's just a comma delimited file. Now, we're going to need to download it. You can't do it from here. Um, notice it has, these are the headings, right? Name, one time max, life max, and description. Down here, you have these um, separated by commas. It's a comma delimited. You could do XML, too. And, and uh, towards the end of the quarter, we'll export and import from databases, right? But so, it's not unusual to have from one database, uh, like a, an Oracle or MySQL, it's fairly easy to save things as a comma delimited file and upload them in the other. You can also do it as XML. XML has some advantages in that you can preserve data types, which you don't with this. So I just wanted to show you what I when I've looked at those before, let's look at new employee text. So you're going to read it just per, yeah, see, this is what I was getting. I have no idea. Hmm. It works just fine if you download it. Oh. Yeah. It's just that. It has a pound oh, sign between every, every character. character. Why? It almost looks like uh, Unicode because it's in between every other character. You got Probably says this is a Unicode. Actually, the database is Unicode, and an ASCII string will not import into a Unicode string, weirdly. <laughs> uh, so I bet this one is. The other one should be, I mean, it may not be. Well, we'll see what happens. So I'm going to do um, new services text, and what I want to do with it. Is downloaded. I didn't want to load it. Okay, so it's in down. Talk about Canvas is where it goes down to the I folder to uh, just copy it. And where I'm going to copy it is, yeah. 
uh, paste. So it's new services dot text. All right, then I'm going to open up a SQL Server Management Studio. And well, it'll be right at the top. It knows that you're, it's kind of what you want to use. In another class, we might look at SQL Server data tools we're going to be using a lot this quarter. The profiler and a lot of this other stuff is uh, they're just extra tools that you can have. But I'm going to do the. Um, Yeah. I know this person has trouble connecting to the, the SQL Server because it doesn't stop with Windows. If it's not starting up to win with Windows, there's a couple of places you can fix that. Let me connect and then why I'm would get it running with uh, why why is that it should run if it doesn't run because it is strange. Because you could go. Um, one of them is uh, SQL Server config. The configuration manager. This is a little easier than going straight to services. It's actually just a filter on the services. And if you go to SQL Server for Services, double click that. Come on. There we go. This is whether they're running or not. And if they're not running, the one server, right? Not running, you can. You can also pause it and you can restart it. You shouldn't need to. You do need to. I found that was the only one I needed to turn on. Why? I have noticed it's not a, a not bad to show this because um, go back. You don't need to. It, 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 a lot of people on laptops. Laptops seem to shut off the service sometimes if they're feeling the memory. <laughs> and uh, if that's the case, you might have to. They don't always automatically start. You might know, and then a couple are stopped. That's again more relevant for the other class. This is just a configuration manager. I'm going to go back here. I actually don't need a query here. Um, I was just going to do something for later. I am going to uh, just set a couple of options. It is under the text editor. Um, all languages. I'm just going to set up line numbers. Okay. It's under options text editor. I actually don't need to query. I'm going to open databases and community assist just to look at them. You guys um, all have community assist, I hope. Mm -hmm. Anyone not have it? I know you're sick of community assist, so am I, actually. <laughs> so, what I'm going to do, I'm going to open up the, and basically what we want to do is port into the grant services text is basically just asking things there. In real life, it may be easier to just type them in. No, it should have a grant type table. I don't have a grant review. So go if you don't have yeah. oh, if you don't assist and you want the one with the underscore go to um 
Get, get, this is if you don't have the right data. Com slash SP Conger. Yes, you want the underscore one. Same just with the underscore. And the, the best click on it, go to raw before. Otherwise, you have all sorts of it. So you just hit refresh and then. I see the internet is not like going real great today. Yes. Well, you know, it's actually it shouldn't blame the routers. Mm -hmm. So then do raw. <laughs> control A, Control C. Go here and just paste it. Run this is actually any time if you totally screw up the database, which is quite possible this quarter, we may totally mess up the databases. You can always go back and get the original. Yeah. <laughs> I did something in my office just the other day where I totally wiped out all the passwords. <laughs> I don't find the files, but they're not running. Right? Yeah, that's what I think. Let's um, just type SQL Server config. No, you don't have to. If it's well, you can leave if you want. It's an older version. I should get rid of it. I I get rid of it now just so you don't have two computers yesterday. Okay. So now the server is. Sorry. Yeah, that happened with this guy. You're strange. Are we ready? I'm not going to run this again. Okay. One of the things that it'll do at the one the, at the very top of that script says if the database exists, drop it. So it, 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 if the database exists, it'll just drop it and rerun it. The only time it you are so what we want to do is we want to add to the grant type today. I don't know why the internet has been so in here. I'll have to ask Ed or David. All right, so at the probably at the database level, a community assist, I'm going to right click. And then if you can't do this, we can do it after. Right, this is just the demo. There's a 
tasks, right? So I right click, there are basic some options, and then there are And we want to import this user. One of the things that SQL Server, and if you don't know, <laughs> but uh, everything don't. Oh, and then here and do import data. And as I said, this will give you some SSIS when we're, except that we'll have to program it a little. This is just a slash. So, and you can even if you want. <laughs> Other bit, you could. So I'm going to do next, and it wants. To know what the data source is. Start with that. There's a whole bunch of different data sources that it could be. It could be a net data provider for Oracle or for SQL Server. It could be Microsoft Access or Excel or an OLEDB. But in MySQL, it's a generic database thing. What the ODBC is for uh, uh, kinds of things. The, so there's all these different um, things you can do, but what we're going to I saw it, there's a flat file because all we have is this, right? Right. No. Um, I think it was even more services. Yeah. Oh, flat mile. Okay. 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 Tasks. I was going to um, brown. Thank you. Do new services. Is it not downloading this? Text file. It's it's I trivial. It's tiny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have it. Yeah. Yeah, but it's still it's, it's compared to what we're. It's a text file with like three rows in it. <laughs> we'll go through the demo. We can do it again if need be. Um, so I added this. Okay. So this is some names are in the first data row. It is. If I look at what I've got there, right? If you're delivered a comma, you might have Make sense? This is no, not yet. Advanced. This is really important because this is where everything fails. If you don't do it, look at your have a problem, and we might have to resave our thing if I can't. 
it says that it's a string. Uh, the name is a string. That's probably true, but I think we want to. Will it work as a DT string? Uh, probably data text. Yeah, probably data type. Or data type, yeah. Data so. Is there going to be a problem for the one time max or like max? Well, yeah, it's not going to be the same type. The thing is that I'm not sure string into you can. I know you can't go the other way. Let's leave the. I might have to come. The Unicode. String. Uh, that's actually what's in the code string. This is this is. It might it might just count. In code, you definitely can't go the other way. Um, let's leave it as a string. We might have to come back. Now, one time max. It says it's a string. It definitely is not. All right. We need to. And this. This is, I would say, DT does possibly currency. Let's try the currency. Yeah. Yeah. Um. You know how I usually do it? When it fails, it gives me an error message that says what data type it wants. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to try the currency one. One of the things is you need to match kind of what's one of the things using is that these don't match what the server does. You have to interpret which is which. Um, and I take for these. Do this right the last problem it would be. Just make it more like two it should work. Uh, because the one the twenty five you will get errors if this uh, is bigger than the one in the table, right? So I'm just saying a lot of the what's going to happen when you do these is you're going to, if they fail, it's usually because the data type is incompatible. And we'll have to go and uh, we come back and fix it. All right. And and I, ex I rarely can make these run the first time. It usually takes me a couple times through. The neat thing is that you can always go back. You don't have to start over, right? It'll let you step back. So a couple of just a quick review. In general, it's just the file. It says it's a delimited. It says that uh, it's a carriage return. Yeah. Carriage return. So it's a new line. It's not Unicode here. That would be checked. You can save as Unicode. I usually do. I think that's why the other one was. Uh, there might be an option in there for UTF-8 because a lot of things now are UTF-8 as well. Yeah. I mean, you could do. That's actually the option that you use in uh, Notepad is UTF. You have two Unicode options. UTF-8 is one. Usually, you just have from my Notepad save as UTF-8. This is as key by default. Well, yeah. Oh, you use Notepad. Yeah. So just to serve, the columns let you see that it's actually reading the flat file properly. This can be important if there's like a nothing. So you might look and you might numbers together or, or um, meet the uh, BA.
in the world. Uh, you know, if these are machine generated, that's unlikely. But if somebody typed it in, it's extremely likely. <laughs> uh, there also be a missing quote. It, well, it could, although mine aren't quoted. I don't. You can't have quotes around the values. You don't have to. So. Um, particularly apostrophes, or then quotes. So the other thing is advanced, and this is usually necessary, is where you go through and you adjust your data types. And again, um, the more you do this, the probably the easier it would be. I think I've got the right data types, but I don't know that. The, the numeric ones could go across as um, currency or the because although the, the sometimes like if you're in C sharp, our match for currency is decimal. It what, can be. What are we, <laughs> very, very much like the the columns. Okay. So I'm just going. To, if you wanted to skip some rows. So I'm going to do next. And uh, we need a, a destination. And again, right up here. So this is when we go into the uh, SSIS, this is always thing too. You're going to have a source, right? And then you're going to have a destination. And you might have a lot of destination, but your uh, SQL Server native client. That's easy enough. This is then the That's easier. We're doing this and wanted it to be really. Uh, the databases community assist, and that's because it's at the higher level it would be used in database. We could still choose a different database. Do next. Now this looks like everything is good, except that, that source, and it's going to now it's going to create a brand new table. Called services. There are things that I've done. Typically, if something is going to be split into multiple tables later, this one isn't. Uh, you might import it as just a new, kind of like a temp table, and then run SQL queries that separate it out in the tables that it goes to. I'm going to choose where, and I'm going to send it again. I'm going to add uh, notice. All the destinations are ignored. If we run this, nothing oh. will happen. So what we need to do is we need to choose. So the grant type name is for the name. Uh, grant type maximum. Grant type life maximum. Type description. And it gives you the data types of the underlying table and whether or not they're nullable. Fix these. You can actually kind of. Yeah, yeah. Right here. So, one time that's the Yes. So, 
when I expand this, you can see it better. Name goes to name, grant type nine. Now, if the names in the underlying file are the same, it maps across automatically. But if the names are different, then you have to manually map the columns just, to columns. These are different enough. Yeah, they're different. I did that on purpose. Okay. So. And we'll, this is, again, something we'll do in SSIS a lot, is have to map columns to each other. This wizard kind of follows the same pattern. So we can do preview just shows us the same stuff we've seen before. We go next, and it gives us a couple of warnings. in and of itself. Warnings, okay. Yeah. I actually found it by hovering over it. It says a potential loss of conversion from string to uh, NV car. Right. Potential loss. Warnings are usually not Oops. fatal. And I think it should copy across just fine. Yeah. I think they're sure enough that it probably should matter. And it will also fail if there's the truncation. You can change that. Um, you can. Why? thing is, there are times, like if records or something and you know that, it might be better to ignore errors mm -hmm. uh, and just let it happen so that the, the duplicates will all be rejected. And that's fine. It's sometimes easier to do that than to go out and remove the duplicates. <laughs> um, but you're saying to allow it. And what happens is duplicate value that has to and so you're instantly stopped. And you and, uh, ignore um error in all errors. And and it won't be. Ignore, thrown out. They'll be thrown like out. The yeah. Okay. So anything, and it, it should create an error. Yes, it's a place where you can create your own error handling. And so with an error. Uh, truncate. That means you could be cutting off data. So we have a couple of options. One is to run immediately. The other is to create an SSI package out of this. And again, packages can be rerun. So if your import is simple enough and it's something, I mean, you might run it through the wizard, save the package, and then you can run it whenever you have a similar. You can encrypt it. I don't know one would do that. It is, uh, I think that's only if you're doing the SSI package. Yeah, you can run it and save an SSI. I did. So one of the things about the SSIS package, it will 
will only run with the same file source. So, but you can always have other files uh, as long as they have the same name, right? If, this doesn't happen anymore. It used to be on the end. You saved all your form input into a text file or something, downloaded the text file at the end of the day and imported it into a database. These days, it's almost always direct to the database. But, you know, which could be like uh, storage sure. batch download. So it could be a batch download warehouse. It's just refreshing the data because you don't usually have the data at warehouse live. The data over a period for the partially because you don't want to slow down the doing the analysis on um there's a I mean, depending on cash registers have gotten smarter now, but most cash registers will produce like a large either. For work or something. And then they could always have the same name. So you could just bring them in. So this, this uh, as I said, the wizards are pretty good for one time things. Although again, you could create a package that could be rerun. To do, and this is your line to do. Is it going to be? If it's all right, all right. Now, I, we need to not be unsurprised to see about X's and you know, these ones. But. It means it failed. And, and one red X is enough to fail the whole thing. Yours is frozen. I'm I can make my font a little bigger if you want. Keep that. Bottom of grant types, we should have. Uh, I have no idea why you're frozen. There. Oh, so I just did a quick query to show that they've been copied. And then I was going to make my font size slightly bigger. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah. I think the one with all the pound signs that you were referring to yeah. is actually writer's error. Right, it's Unicode, which is fine. Was it grant type? Yeah, grant. Oh, I guess we should have looked before to what was there. So just thinking that, that, yeah. yeah. Yes. So, what do you suggest we use for the writer's text if it's not Just download it, it's fine. It's just Canvas. It's doesn't know what's going on. I just control um, to make a seek the query screen bigger. Yeah, I, I, I can make the. Uh, I've already got a compressed screen to some extent. Uh, grid results, text results, execution plan, grid results. Oh. Yeah, so the writers one. Well, we did that at all. If you bring it in, what you want to do is a point where you have to choose. Which table you are? Yeah, that's like the whole point of the club. Oh, you know, you did the little thing where you poked the pencil on the table. That was probably before you were born. You probably had some more gadgets. Oh, no, I guess there's a joke that should be <laughs> so the, the assignment is pretty much the same. So I'm going to kill this and restart, which you don't have to. I'm doing that just because the changes I made won't take effect until I restart. But if you go to um, Canvas, and again, this doesn't show up very good in this, which is you just want to download it. Going through the same process. So if I look at is it still down? It should be able to do like integer, right? So this is for the assignment. I'm going to open. Wow, that takes a long time. I think that it took me a long time to. So there is a fair number of these. Yeah, it should be hard, and it should just go into. Um, My brain is gone. These should both be integer types, basically. This is the writers. Yeah. Writers were on each route. I'll tell you if it's not. <laughs> So I'm going to give you a few minutes to do this, and if you need, to, if you're done or want to, you can take a 
But maybe about 11, we will start talking about the SSI and S5 digits. So the table you want to go into. Let's see what's in. Yeah, so you might want to. Yeah, let, let me look. Matter. It could have. Okay. So, uh, you know, it just depends. Natural uh, alt. Uh, so the ridership is what you want. Yeah, ignore. Right now, the ridership key will be automatically generated. The fair key is brand new since I made that text fair to the ridership so that and so we can we can fix that later. I know how to fix that. But but this will work just fine. It's only gonna do those two. The fair key uh, after the fact if we want to say it's more simple than that. Um, let's see, I vote yes, we want to use community of the metro. We'll be right back and that will help. But yeah, just try to run. We'll start talking about the next one. I think I'm just going to do kind of a quickie introduction and then we'll do a bigger introduction next time. Right I'm back. sorry, Unicode, yes or no? I think it's defaulted. Yeah, if it defaults to Unicode, it's going to be Thank you. So, yeah, it's. it's Yeah. I'm going to stop this. The next thing I'll do is a 